immediately. There can be no discussion until you are off the roof. Governor, just exactly what's going on here? I have no idea. The prisoners haven't issued any demands. Oh, except for one. They've insisted we bring in a mediator, a man of peace, a man of goodwill. The one man, the only man who can shed a glimmer of hope, a ray of sunshine on this terrible situation. Christmas is a time of great happiness, togetherness, uninhibited joy. <laughs> However, during the festive season, there is also a significant rise in the suicide rate. <laughs> and it's about this that I would like to speak to you tonight. <laughs> During the war, I had a hand. The president has been right at the prison. The governor needs your help. Well, I don't know what he thinks I can do. I mean, I preach at the prison twice a week as it is. This is really very inconvenient. Mr. Burnley, would you be so good as to dismiss the congregation <laughs> oh, after you've taken the collection? <laughs> What's going on here? The police have come for the real and jolly. About time, too. <laughs> They're taking them to Sordal Prison. Aye, ah, well, I hope they throw away the key. <laughs> Demanding job being a Church of Scotland minister, you know. Whist here, there, and everywhere, helping desperate people in tragic circumstances. A bit like Challenge Annika, you know. <laughs> minister, thank you for coming. Sorry to interrupt your Christmas Eve, but something has to be done here. Governor! Something's happening! Minister, look out! <laughs> <laughs> Minister, we've asked for a loud hailer. I want to speak to you. This is the Reverend Jolly speaking. What are your demands? You'll be wanting less time in your cells, I suppose. Or time watching television. You want Molly coddling. I know that, sir. Where will they come down? And right now, we'll even get up our benefits and our privileges on one condition. And what is that? Yeah. <laughs> 
little bit. Get away. I am sorry, Minister, but if the inmates want you barred from the prison, then I have to go along with them. Look at my assistant governor up there. You mean he's taking a hostage? No, no, he just happens to agree with them. <laughs> Well, maybe I did get a bit carried away back there. I know our saviour said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone, but he didn't have that kind of provocation to deal with. <laughs> I've known those thugs up there since they were first offenders. Half of them were in my Sunday school. <laughs> Two of the lifers were in my BB company. <laughs> those men owe everything they have to me. I made them what they are today, and that's all the time. Never mind, Mr. J. Look on the bright side. It'll give you more time to spend at home with your wife. He'll be lucky. <laughs> Chestnuts roasting in an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. That's what Christmas is all about. Blunt nuts and frostbite. <laughs> Dear Mr. Jolly, my wife is always a rather formal woman. <laughs> I have left you. I have left you. There is a God. <laughs> I have left you this note. Because I'm spending Christmas and the New Year with my mother. She has a badly twisted ankle. I'm not surprised. A woman of her age has no business bungee jumping. <laughs> Please try to survive on your own. Yours faithfully, Ephesia. <laughs> well, she talks to me as if I was incompetent, incapable of coping on my own in, in my own home. Well, that's right for the bed. The bed. <laughs> sure, I've seen a bit in trouble. Oh. <laughs> Just the night before Christmas, all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Except a wee grouse. <laughs> and if is away, I just go wild. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong, if is my anchor, the great rock in my life. At least that's what it feels like lying beside her in bed. <laughs> Ephesia and I have a marriage made in heaven. Which is a pity. If it be made in Hong Kong, it might not have lasted so long. <laughs> just listen to that. Does that not just sum up what Christmas is all about? A few well-intentioned, charitable souls standing out there in the cold, singing their hearts out. And the rest of us sit warm, snug in our own wee houses, pretending we're not in.
I really don't mind the Fizia using my electric razor to shave her legs. I just wish to God she'd take her tights off first. <laughs> Well, my good lady has excelled herself in my Christmas present this year. Just what I needed. A tie pin. <laughs> of course, to most people, Christmas is just tinsel and trees and paper hats and presents, but to a man of the cloth like myself, it means much more than that. It means a whole lot of unpaid overtime to start with. <laughs> As I look out at this sea of faces, the faces of the truly faithful that have flocked to this Christmas Day service, <laughs> I'm not all the more worthwhile to know that I'm bringing help to those with the greatest need. Shush now, Minnie, it'll soon be over. <laughs> Besides, it saves us heat in the house for a couple of hours. Immediately after the service, I'm playing Santa Claus at the sick children's hospital. It wasn't my idea. In fact, I even asked if I couldn't visit a healthy children's hospital instead. <laughs> so, let's speak for a moment about sickness. Children are looking forward to your visit. <laughs> mm, maybe so. You feel that right, Charlie. You know. See, when I was a boy, all I ever got in my stocking was an orange, a conker, and sometimes a bar of chocolate. I was absolutely delighted with that. Nowadays, kids are just spoiled. What with computer games, mountain bikes, portable CD players. If you ask any parent what Christmas is really about, and they'll tell you, it's about 700 quid ahead. <laughs> Speaking for yourself, you're sad it's all come to us. Oh, no. Speaking for myself, I'm sad it's all come too late for me. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> Kids, eh? They really make Christmas special, don't they? Just to see their wee faces there. Really quite made my day. suffer the little children and by God I suffered them this morning. <laughs> oh. Now it looks as though Christmas dinner will be a fair bit of suffering too. I should have read the rest of Ephesia's letter. P.S. Your dinner is in the freezer. <laughs> Well, not to worry. Probably defrost in time for next bloody Christmas. <laughs>
Oh, uh, a little whimsy of Ephesius. I, I hardly ever use it. I mean, it's nearly it. <laughs> How did it get so bloody heavy? <laughs> now, this is all very well. Where am I going to find a Christmas dinner at this short notice? I'm sorry. I can't let you in, Mr. Jolly. It's more than my job's worth. You've only just the last of the men off the roof. Here you are, though. And a Merry Christmas. Ah, sure. <clears throat> well, having tasted their food, I'm surprised the prisoners stayed up on the roof so long. I'm amazed they didn't throw themselves off. <laughs> Christmas Day broadcast. The woman's a pro. Of course, it takes one to know one. <laughs> I hope many last calls no piece of cake. It's a huge responsibility bringing a cheery word and a comforting smile into homes of people that, quite frankly, you would emigrate to avoid meeting. <laughs> well, maybe it's time I got on with my own routine. else would a minister seek inspiration but from the good book? <laughs> That's a good book too. That's an absolute belt. <laughs> Sure. 
in perspective, doesn't it? It's another rooftop protest. Never upon your nelly. These prisoners can go and get run and jump. Oh, but it's no at the prison this time. seen the competition?
It's all very well trying to walk that extra mile, but not when you've got a blister the size of a beach ball. Oh. Well, then, I'd better just see who I've got to call on tomorrow. Oh, yes. Mrs. Drumchucky. <laughs> so I was passing over the collection bag and never putting anything in. I'll call on her in the middle of Coronation Street. <laughs> and old Mr. Wilson, I haven't seen him in the church for a couple of months. So I'd better just go round and make sure he's feeling guilty. <laughs> oh, God. Well, this is ridiculous. My stomach feels as if my throat's cut. There must be something to eat in this place. Ah, that's more like it. What about all the feed here? Hiding it in the one place I've never think of looking. The fridge. <laughs> oh, that's really quite edible. Uh -huh. She makes a mean Christmas pudding, does Ophelia. Got plenty of nuts. Raisins. We spot brandy. Mm. Mm. All our loose change. <laughs> No earthly use, is it? I've got to see the dentist first thing. I've had a terrible night and I've got a very busy day today. It's my bloody luck. <laughs> what? Oh, that, that's excellent. Yes, and, and, and the dentist will take me immediately. Thank you. Gentlemen, maybe a wee prayer would help to comfort us. <laughs> oh, Lord, <laughs> hear us as we go to face the pliers and the drill. <laughs> Torture us not with tooth decay and gum disease. <laughs> but help us to spit straight and true. <laughs> and may your hand be there to wipe away the stringy bits of bloody flame. <laughs> In your name we ask. Minister. What, me? Are you? Oh, surely not. I mean, it's, I mean, there must, oh, there must be someone else. Oh, what, what, what about women and children first? <laughs> 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 Excuse me, Mr. Dilly. How are you? At a nice Christmas? I think nice might be a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> Let's have a look then, shall we? <laughs> right, well, not much there. We'll have you fixed up in no time, nurse. <laughs> Just relax and breathe deeply. The minister hates needles, always has. So he gets gas for a filling? Oh, no. The gas just knocks him out long enough for me to give him an injection. 
<laughs> and between the two of them, he'll be feeling no pain for the rest of the day. bereaved, <coughs> lost her husband in tragic circumstances. He died. <laughs> Can't get much more tragic than that. Uh, the thing about these visits is tact, right? Tact. You've got, you've got to have sense, senses, it's sensitivity. And above all, respect. Hello! <laughs> Open up! It's me, the minister! Hello! Hello! Oh, <laughs> oh he, was a, he was a good man, Mrs. McIntyre. A good man. A hell of a, a helpful hey, man, you thought, yes. Always was. <laughs> His family was just a thing, man. Always willing to lend a hand and keep the movement for a full season. <laughs> Don't you worry. We'll give him a lovely send off tomorrow. Yeah. I do a nice we do. I do a nice, a nice we do. Which reminds me, have you got that a list of his favourite hymns after you come? It's your husband's funeral, Mrs. McIntyre. It's no the universal song. <laughs> Maybe we could do a wee medley, eh? A nice wee medley. That's a nice wee medley. You, you leave it to me. <laughs> well, here we are again. At another funeral. Another melancholy funeral. Painful occasion. It's moments like these that remind me why I got into the ministry in the first place. <laughs>
very good of you to come. No, I'm not a problem. I'm not a problem. I'm not a problem. I'm not a problem. I'm just full. I'm just fat. I'm just starved. The whole, the whole thing is a good one. Wednesday, the 29th of December, and it's a beautiful day. <laughs> Good morning to you. It's Thursday, the 30th of December. Isn't it a wonderful day? Looking forward to the new... <laughs> with all these interruptions. Hello, Samaritans, how can I help you? <laughs> oh. oh, I know, I know. You, you feel depressed and completely without hope. Oh, so do I. <laughs> What do you think is happening to us? Well, I mean, it's just been one thing after another, this last week. I mean, it all, it all began... Are you sitting down? Yeah. It all began when I was called to the prison, you see, and, uh, and we're all rioting because they didn't want me anymore. And I'm a, my own congregation. They didn't... <laughs> well, I'm upset. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes, you're, you're absolutely right, yes. I'll, I will, I will try to pull myself together. Yes, yes. Th thank you so much for phoning. Bye-bye. <laughs> what a nice man. <laughs> Oh, I love her. 
Hogmanay. It's a chance to put behind us all our old miseries and disappointments. And to look forward with confidence to all the new miseries and disappointments that lie ahead. <laughs> Well, at least there's been one bit of good news. It seems we've got the money to repair the church roof after all. Not out of the roof fund, of course. Out of my swear box. <laughs> again, eh? Doesn't time fly when you're excruciatingly happy? <laughs> what a year I've had. Honestly, as, as the, uh, uh, what's his name? God. <laughs> as, as God is my judge, I've had a hell of a year. <laughs> to start with, Ephesia has been telling everybody about our OBE. That's our out-of-body experience. If <laughs> only she'd had the sense not to go back in. <laughs> well, she told me she left her body and floated right up to the ceiling and then drifted out the window. God, if only I'd been awake at the time, I could have nailed the window shut. <laughs> Mind you, I, I had a, a strange experience myself. I, I had a long train journey one time and I was kind of hot and sticky when I got to Glasgow, so I booked into one of these massage parlours. <laughs> and this gorgeous young lady rubbed me all over with baby oil and gave me a lovely massage. But then she leaned right over me and she whispered, Would you like super sex? <laughs> I said, if it's all the same to you, I'll have the soup. <laughs> but the, uh, the lowest point of this year was a wedding I had to do in September. I'm pretty sure it was a shotgun wedding, because, well, the bride looked as if she was hiding the ammunition up her juke. <laughs> And I don't think the bridegroom was too happy. When I said, do you take this woman? He said, would you? <laughs> well, the, the whole thing ended in a riot, and it kind of reminded me of the parable of the marriage feast, which, as you all know, contains the immortal words, many are called, but few are chosen. Now, there was a king who lived in, what's it called? Cumbernaut. <laughs> And he gave a wedding feast for his son, and he sent out slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding. But they shunned his invitations and made interesting suggestions as to what he might do with them. <laughs> and the king said, comest thou mustest. <laughs> there will be bovril. <laughs> and mutting pies, which are even now in the freezer. And with a DIY wine kit, lo, I have turned water into wine. <laughs> And the guests came, and they did drink prodigiously of the water which the king had turned into wine, and were soon turning it back into water again. <laughs> and while they stuffed their faces with pies and bovril, a musician played the piano unto them. But lo, some of the pies had not been defrosted. <laughs> and there was wailing and much gnashing of teeth. <laughs> And one of the guests rose up in anger and threw his pie at the man who was playing the piano. <laughs> at this, the king's wife was outraged and spake unto the servant, saying, This man hath smote my husband's penis. <laughs> the blame is thine, for thou heated not the pies. 
which is why many were called and two were frozen. <laughs> I thought I was in pretty uplifting form tonight. A rattling good performance like that absolutely sets me up for the next 12 months. I feel spiritually resuscitated, ready to face the world and spread the word of joy. Oh, uh, by the way, may I wish you all a very happy and a very bright new year. Good night. Oh! Oh, sorry, was that me? Did I kick a plug or something? Oh, no, I tell you what, they're maybe like the fairy lights. You know, when, when there's a loose bulb. I'll just try something.